mentioned as something that could be um, useful. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Doctor. With that, let me recognize the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Pasquale, to inquire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I very, was very interested in the remarks of my good friend from Ohio, and my, I want to ask a question to begin with uh, in that spirit. Uh, Dr. Liu, uh, when you work at a great university, uh, you're an obstetrician. Um, you have a lot to offer here, as all the other panelists have. But I want to ask you something. Um, there was the report from the Institute of Medicine back in 2003, and it was regarding unequal treatment and racial and ethnic disparities. So the providers are on the front lines of ensuring that health care is equitable. What are physicians doing? Because you do a lot of education with our residents. Uh, to improve their knowledge of social de determinants and health equity in order to provide better care. What are physicians doing? Dr. Liu? You're right. You know, uh, uh, we have decades of research that really kind of document an unequal treatment uh, in, in various areas of health care. Uh, but it took someone like Serena Williams to actually call it out to bring some public attention uh, to, to this. Uh, I think that we can definitely do better uh, in terms of training the next generation of physicians uh, about uh, kind of implicit bias, uh, about social determinants and so forth. Uh, I think that really needs to start really early, perhaps even before uh, medical school. Uh, yeah, I was uh, fortunate to be encouraged to uh, pursue a broad liberal education at Stanford, uh, where uh, I was encouraged to take classes in communication and psychology and anthropology, uh, which I think in the long run really made me a, a much better doctor. Uh, in my medical training, I was in a special program, the joint medical program between Berkeley and UCSF, and we spent that first year doing home visiting. Uh, and I still remember you know, visiting an elderly couple in Little Italy in San Francisco, and they were just like the nicest people. Right? They, they baked cookies for me every time I visited. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of medical knowledge. They loved to tell me their life stories. So I just you know, like learned to listen really well and, and okay, really be able to you know, see how the home environment and community environment really impact on patients' health. So, so I think some of those things are really important to standardize across all medical trainings to make sure that uh, uh, future doctors are you know, kind of more aware of, yeah, uh, uh, of the implicit bias of social determinants of health. Thank you. Uh, we know, Mr. Chairman, that uh, individual health is influenced by many factors, including race, ethnicity, sex, age, socioeconomic status, and geographic location. And that's just to start. Uh, in the past, I've introduced legislation called the REDUCE Act, REDUCE standing for Reducing Disparities Using Care Models and Education. It works to reduce health disparities. I'm going to introduce it again very soon, working on it, bringing it up to date. The bill, which will work to provide updated data on our most vulnerable populations and giving states and localities tools to better understand laws and projects that impact public health. I think this is critical to the issue listening here today, reading what your testimony, all of you have said. What do very different districts have to do with the major problem here? Uh, an individual's long-term health status is determined by poor health status, by disease risk factors, and by limited access to care. And yet some of many of these cases, there is not a problem of access to care. The last predicate is so painful because it should be preventable. Tragically, women in this country 
or more likely to die from childbirth or pregnancy-related causes than women in other high-income countries. We've heard that on an, many times today. An American mom today is 50 percent more likely to die in childbirth. And Mr. Chairman, that simply, Chair Liddy, that simply is not acceptable to any of us. But in order to say that, you say, well, then what are you going to do about it? See, we're good maybe at times analyzing, and we're very poor responding to the problems and getting something changed for the better. I yield. Thank you. Thank you. The chair now recognizes herself for five minutes. Uh, let me just start by saying uh, what a privilege it is to serve on a committee, um, the House Ways and Means Committee.